for its part, the police department did take action against the officers internally, suspending two, placing a third on administrative leave. I'm told the two suspended officers also face the internal police trial board for conduct unbecoming of an officer. Both remain, again, on administrative duty. Picture this. A quiet day turns upside down in Prince George's County when three officers decide to make their own rules. It's like they thought, hey, who needs the Fourth Amendment when you have a badge and a gun, right? So they bust into an apartment without a warrant, a hello or even a polite knock. And who's there to greet them? Not a criminal mastermind, but a dog named Hennessy. Now in a twist that not even Hollywood could dream up, these officers decide Hennessy is public enemy number one. Let's set the scene June 2021. A report of a dog bite leads these officers to an apartment. They don't wait for an answer at the door, they just get a key and let themselves in. It's like they were trying out for a role in a bad cop drama. Inside, residents are asking, hey, got a warrant, but nope, these officers are freelancing. Then, in a moment that could make you cry or scream or both, Hennessy makes a break for it. And how do our heroes respond? With bullets and a taser, Hennessy didn't stand a chance. And there's a resident trying to comfort Hennessy as she lays there, a tragic victim of a shootout she didn't sign up for. It was a nightmare. I held Henny's body, bloody body, while she was dying in my arms, while the rest of her family was wrongfully detained and denied ability to check on her. It is a fundamental, basic civil right, right? This is not um, anything complex. This is the basics. This is like the text of the Fourth Amendment. The warrants must be obtained or you cannot go in. That is it. If there's no exception, then you are in violation of the Constitution. And that is exactly what these officers did. From the Prince George's County Police Department, our complaint alleges that our clients... Ms. Umana, Ms. Sanchez, Ms. Benitez, and Mr. Cuevas were deprived of their basic Fourth Amendment rights and forcibly, at the hands of the Prince George's County Police, suffered life-changing trauma after three officers illegally, without a warrant, entered their home, brutalized them, falsely arrested them, threatened them, and killed Ms. Mana's beloved dog, Hennessy, right in front of them on June 2nd, 2021. We're going to show you a tape, and it's an ugly situation, deserving of every penny that we're uh, demanding from the county. And we're here to, to make known that the Prince George's County police department has not yet uh, completed the job of reform. They still do ugly things to citizens. There's a pattern in practice that we outline in our lawsuit of the various horrors that they've inflicted on the citizens of Prince George's County, notwithstanding successful lawsuits and settlements that we have filed against them on numerous occasions, and notwithstanding uh, the Prince George's County government's commitment to clean up the department. And so without further ado, I'm going to introduce Malcolm Ruff, who will lay out in greater detail and uh, uh, introduce the other participants in this, in this sad day, a day that we hope will be remembered as the low point in the Prince George's County Police Department's history. Mr. Ruff. Thank you, Billy. As Mr. Murphy mentioned, uh, my name is Malcolm Ruff, first of all. I'm a trial lawyer at the Murphy Firm in Baltimore. Uh, and once again, we are here in Prince George's County filing another civil rights federal lawsuit against the county for utter misconduct. June 2nd, 2021, Corporals Jason Ball, uh, Corporal Jackson, and Corporal Joseph Mihanda, excuse me, Anthony Jackson, and Corporal Joseph Mihanda illegally broke into these four young people's apartment without any legal justification. 
Astoundingly, these PGPD officers broke into their home by obtaining the master key from a maintenance worker at their apartment complex, all just to investigate an alleged dog biting incident. What happened after that was nothing short of utter chaos created solely by these brazen, retaliatory, and completely unauthorized actions of these disrespectful officers. Unlike the numerous cases that Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy mentioned before that we've brought against the county, uh, in this situation, this incident was captured not only on cell phone, but also on body-worn camera. And so at this time, I'm going to play a compilation of just some of the footage of this heinous incident, which these four brave young folk were forced to endure. Can you go back? Can you go back? Mike, can you go back? This would be old. This would be old. Can you go all the way back to the beginning? It wasn't. It wasn't. It's open all the time. Because you're trespassing. Use your phone and go. Thank you. Only Google trespassing. I'm sorry, what? Google those words. Google. The aftermath, a lawsuit for $16 million, because apparently shooting dogs and breaking into homes without a warrant is frowned upon. The officers got a slap on the wrist, a little suspension here, a missed promotion there. Meanwhile, the residents are left with a nightmare memory and a bloody reminder of the day the law forgot the law. The lawyers are calling for better training. Hey, maybe let's not shoot dogs and invade homes without a warrant, they say, as if that wasn't already pretty clear in the Constitution. But here we are in a world where needing a reminder of the basics seems necessary. And the police department? They're as silent as a mime at a noise complaint. The state's attorney looked into it and said, nothing to see here, folks. But we're all watching, thinking maybe, 
Just maybe, it's time for a little refresher course on those pesky constitutional rights. Because at the end of the day, if you're breaking into homes and shooting pets, maybe you're in the wrong line of work. Maybe try something less impactful, like mime school.